What's good, fam? Teacher Eddie here with another reaction. Today we're doing 50 common misconceptions. Some of these are going to be historical. Some of these are just going to be weird. But as always, Teacher Eddie here to break it down, to add some historical context to it. And as always, let's get into it. Oh, and by the way, this is uh, actually hosted by John Green. John Green, for those of you who do not know, is actually the author of, um, what is it, Fault Fault in Our Stars, Fault of Our Stars. I confuse them, but I know a lot of my students are really into it, and they really love it, so I just figured I'd throw in that tidbit. But without further ado, do, do, let's go. Hit us with them knowledges. Okay. Video doesn't want to start for some reason. Technical difficulties this is what happens when you don't edit videos. Hi, I'm John Green. Welcome we to go. my salon. This is mental floss, and one, Vikings never wore horns on their helmets, at least not until an 1876 staging of Wagner's opera, The Ring of the Nibelung, is the first of 50 myths I'm about to bust for you. I'm ready. I'm ready. My body's ready for this. You know Iron Maidens, those medieval torture devices that inspired the name of the fourth best heavy metal band of all time? Yeah, they were fictional. Marie Antoinette never- Oh, uh, that is absolutely 100% true. Uh, Iron Maidens were not used as torture devices. Um, it's just when they were actually found, people were like, oh my god. These are make pretty cool torture devices. As far as the fourth greatest heavy metal band, can't comment, fam, you know I'm a hip-hop head. We actually said let them eat cake when told that peasants were starving due to lack of bread. And while we're on the- Yes, so peasants were starving due to lack of bread, so what Marie Antoinette actually said was, let them eat bread. Or, uh, roughly translated, I believe it was, let them eat brioche. I've never had brioche in my life, but you know what sounds delicious. The topic of French royal women who were forcefully separated from their heads, Anne Boleyn did not have 11 fingers, or at least most historians don't think she did. The American duck Yes, that, that's another one. Um, so, I just want to catch... And Anne Boleyn did not... And while we're on the topic of French royal women who... Yeah, he said French royal women. Um, Anne Boleyn was not French. Anne Boleyn was English. But yeah, they, again, Louis Louis was looking for ways to whack his wives because he was looking for that ass. So he was looking for any reason. He was like, man, you know what this woman got? This woman got 11 fingers. And guess what, where she wants to stick that extra finger, man? I, ain't let, I don't even let anyone wave the finger in my face, let alone put it in... You know where. ...were forcefully separated from their heads. Anne Boleyn did not have not signed on July 4th, 1776. It was signed on August 2nd. Okay, so this one is another common misconception. Um, so I'm disagreeing on this one. July 4th was when it was ratified. So in order for it to be ratified, it had to have been signed by some people. So I've discussed this in my other history videos uh, involving uh, the Founding Fathers. So Thomas Jefferson usually gets the lion's share, if not all of the credit. You know, when they teach it in school, it's Thomas Jefferson wrote the Declaration of Independence. Thomas Je Jefferson did literally write it. Uh, he sat there and wrote it, and he contributed a lot to it, but he did not do it alone. Uh, Benjamin Franklin and the always ornery John Adams were in the room with him as he was writing it, contributing to it, uh, using various enlightened uh, theories, especially they weighed heavily on, uh, relied heavily on John Locke. You know, that's where you get life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. That is a John Locke uh, theory of life, liberty, and property. And I explained in other videos why they removed property and instead put in pursuit of happiness. But some people did sign it on July 4th. We're just talking about a time where a horse and buggy from New York to Boston, uh, you know, you're talking about weeks, right? So along the way, it was signed by more and more people all the way into August. But to say that it was not signed on July 4th is, uh, again, uh, not true. 1776. Also, not to harsh on your buzz, but the U.S. Constitution was not written on hemp paper. It was written True. on parchment. Napoleon did not have a Napoleon complex because he was 5'7", which was actually slightly above average height for people of his time. 
Uh, yes, that's true. This was a myth that was perpetuated by his enemies to more be like, hey, you know what they got over there in France? They got this general named Napoleon, right? Can you believe this? This guy's like straight out of Munchkin land. He looks like one of the Oompa Loompas from uh, uh, Charlie's Chocolate Factory, uh, Willy Wonka, whatever. You know what I'm talking about. He's like four foot two and he's trying to lead an army. You believe this? Get out of here with that. But yeah, Napoleon was average height. Albert Einstein did not fail math at school. In fact, when he was shown a newspaper column claiming he had, Einstein responded, before I was 15, I had mastered differential and integral calculus. Einstein did marry his first cousin though, so that's something. We'll talk about that in a future episode. Uh, not only did Einstein marry his cousin, <clears throat> but Einstein was an awful, awful husband. Einstein was not the nicest of people when it came to uh, his wife relationships. Uh, he had an open relationship. Uh, she didn't. He even wrote out a list of rules of things that would annoy him that his wife had to follow. But uh, yeah, he never failed math. That was more of a, you know, to, to let people feel better about themselves. They're like, hey, you know, Einstein failed math. You know, it's like those Facebook things that try to make you feel better. Those Facebook quizzes, like 99% of people don't pass this. Only 1% of the smartest people on earth can pass this. Apparently, everybody passes it on Facebook. So Facebook contains the 1% of the smartest people in the entire world, which is obviously backed up because they use memes for all their arguments. So how can you argue with a meme? I don't know. Check and mate. John F. Kennedy did not say, I am a jelly donut when he said, ich bin ein Berliner. No yeah. one in Berlin was confused on that 100%. day about what Kennedy was saying. Sushi does not mean raw fish. It means sour rice. Placing sour rice? I did not know that. That's cool. Next time I, next time I hit up the, uh, the sushi joint, I'm going to drop that knowledge on, on, the, on the Japanese dude who's, who's behind the glass like making the sushi. I'm like, hey, you know what? Sushi stands for sour rice. And then he's going to be like, ah, oh, yeah, good one, good one. Make sure that rice is extra sour for that guy. Metal in the microwave doesn't ruin the microwave. I mean, it's a bad idea. You shouldn't do it. But look, we just microwave this in tinfoil. And now in the smoldering remains, I am microwaving a hot pocket. The word crap is not mm. derived from the great Thomas Crapper. I, I'm assuming it's going to make it taste a little smoky, though. It's going to stink your place up. So it's still not a good idea who helped give us indoor plumbing. Unfortunately, crap just comes from Latin, like every other word. 420 is not the Los Angeles police code for marijuana possession. Police code 420 just means juvenile disturbance, which only sometimes involves marijuana possession. The Interesting. I did not know that because, again, as you all know, I don't partake in, in the wacky tobacco, them doobies, the reefer madness, all that stuff. I don't look down upon people who do that. That's your own thing. I personally prefer, uh, you know, a little drink now and then. I always keep the uh, the Jameson Irish whiskey nearby. But, um, I mean, le weed should be legal. Uh, I don't have any problem with it, but I did not know that. Uh, I always assumed it was, you know, like a police thing. Just like 5150. I know 5150 very well. Look up 5150 if you don't know about that. But if you live with a crazy-ass family, you know what 5150 means. The Great Wall of China is not the only man-made object visible from space. For one thing, many man-made objects are visible from space. For another thing, the Great Wall of China is not one of them. Yes, the Great Wall of China is not even one of them. I don't know where this came from, uh, but the Great Wall of China is not visible from space. Uh, because while it is extremely long, it's very narrow so it would not be visible from space. There is no such thing as an elephant graveyard. When elephants want to die, they just lie down and do it like the rest of us, even puppy-sized elephants. I didn't even the know 1992 that. The book Sharks Don't Get Cancer led to a huge increase in people using ground-up shark cartilage yes. to treat cancer, but one, that doesn't work, and two, sharks do get cancer. Com yeah, that, I remember that whole craze. Uh, this went back into, um, cause I used to, uh, work for a short period of time at a health food store and everybody was coming in for that shark cartilage. I was like, y'all know this is nonsense, right? And it probably ain't even shark cartilage in there. I mean, come on, let's be real. We all knew that was like, it was like ground up goldfish up in there, but people were buying it, man. Cause suckers are born every minute. 
Chameleons don't primarily change color to camouflage. It helps them regulate their temperature, and also it's a way of communicating. Yes. They're like, hey there, you're pretty attractive, but how I don't doing? know how to talk, so I'm just going to turn red. <laughs> Throwing rice at weddings does not lead to birds eating that rice, and then the rice expanding in their stomachs, and then the birds exploding. That has never happened in all of human history, or bird history. Or the history of rice. Uh, yeah, I remember this one even when I was a kid. Uh, that, oh, don't do that, birds, and they're going to explode because the rice is going to expand in their stomachs. And I'm like, you know, as a five-year-old, I was like, that sounds cool. I'm going to go and feed rice to a bunch of birds now, especially them pigeons, man. We got too many pigeons here in New York City, man. It's us versus the pigeons. An earthworm does not become two earthworms when you cut it in half. If it's lucky, the part with the mouth survives and you're left with one smaller earthworm. But in all likelihood, you're left with one dead earthworm Never and two heard pieces. Of that. Humans have more than five senses, including a sense of time, acceleration, yes. limb position. The five senses were made up by Aristotle, with whom I have a long standing and very public feud. And as usual, he was wrong and I am right and shut up about how he isn't here to defend himself. Shave yeah, it should have been that. Uh, yeah, we have more than five senses, and also, for you kids in the, uh, out there uh, who uh, get taught there are, are three forms of matter, uh, gas, solid, and liquid, hit your teacher with the fourth one, plasma. Shaving does not cause hair to grow back thicker or coarser, no matter what 100%. part of your body you're shaving. Also, your fingernails don't keep growing after you die. They appear to keep growing because your skin recedes. If you uh, yeah, and also your hair. Uh, unfortunately, I've ran across my share of dead bodies living in New York City, but yeah, it just looks like their nails are growing and their hair keeps growing, but it's just because your skin is, um, uh, drying out, it starts to recede. So it just makes your nails and hair look bigger. You swallow your gum, it will not stick in your stomach for seven years. It goes oh, through your body God. just the same as anything else that you eat. Except batteries. If you take one thing away from this video, don't eat batteries. Who the hell's eating batteries? What's wrong with you people? Why are you eating batteries for? Stop eating batteries. What do you think, it's gonna give you a charge? People do not just use 10% of their brains. William James seems to have coined this one, but he was speaking figuratively. You can't- Yeah, that, that, one, that one annoys the hell out of me. Um, you use your brain, you use a hundred percent of your brain. Can some people, uh, access certain parts of their brains at a greater capacity than other people? Yes. And that's how you get people who are talented in mathematics or music or whatever it is. But to say that they have some sort of secret access to parts of the brain that we don't, everybody has access to part at uh, all. And that stupid ass movie with Scarlett Johansson, Johansson. Like, yeah, oh man, once she, once she was able to use 100% of her brain, uh, oh my god. Like, she, she turned into a uh, deity or whatever. Can't catch warts from toads, but you can catch warts from other people. And that's why I always say, only socialize with toads. Well, that's true. And especially if you catch them genital warts, uh, or as uh, some people like to call them, extra girth. Yeah, you're gonna catch that from people, man. And you keep that, you keep, like Eddie Murphy said, man, you keep that stuff forever like luggage. Them a penny drop from the Empire State Building will not kill someone if it lands on their head because the terminal velocity of a penny is between 30 and 50 miles per yeah. hour, not fast enough to kill anyone. Also, 100%. if you drop a penny from the top of the Empire State Building, it will land like three stories below you because the building is shaped That's like this. That's a good this. point. Not only did Abner Doubleday not invent baseball, he never claimed to have invented baseball. And Yeah, so uh, I am, a, I love, actually... Aside from the, the way I got interested in history was actually through movies because as a child uh, I was really into old movies old everything. I loved jazz I was like at six years old. I was the weird kid who was listening to like Bing Crosby and uh, You know Frank Sinatra and I was watching old Warner gangster movies with James Cagney Humphrey Bogart and you know the classics Grapes of Wrath Casablanca uh, so that's how I got interested in history in general was the history of movies really fascinated me But then the other one was history of sports with an emphasis on boxing and baseball Because American history and baseball really run congruently together perfectly. There's a lot of synergies there But upon the anniversary, I believe it was the 50th anniversary of uh, baseball which originated uh, mainly during the Civil War and Abner Doubleday was involved in the Civil War uh, they knew they wanted to come up with some kind of origin story, you know, uh, and 
it was there were a whole bunch of different myths about you know where it started and they settled on cooperstown and they settled on abner doubleday and abner was like all right i'll go with it you know i'll take the fame but yeah abner doubleday did not invent baseball Speaking of people who didn't invent things, the Caesar salad is not named for Julius Caesar, but rather for Caesar Cardini, who supposedly invented the salad in Tijuana, Mexico in 1924. Did not about know the that. Magic Dragon? Not about marijuana. As Mary of Peter, Paul, and Mary put it, believe me, if he wanted to write a song about marijuana, he would have written a song about marijuana. All right, all right. You know, I'm, I'm, calling, bu I'm calling BS on that one. Uh, that's kind of like uh, uh, John Lennon. Uh, when he wrote Lucy in the Sky with Diamonds, they were like, you know, those 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 initials stand for LSD. And he's like, oh, man, what a shock. You know, it's like Captain Reynolds in Casablanca. What, there's gambling here? Shocked. Shocked, I tell you. And, you know, you're going to tell me a purple dragon that's named Puff, written in the 60s by Peter, Paul, and Mary, is not about marijuana. That's like trying to convince me that John Lennon wasn't writing a song about LSD. Maybe he saw a picture, yeah, and his son Julian was like, yeah, that's Lucy. And John was like, Lucy, Lucy, LSD. I love LSD. It's so good. Lucy in the Sky with Diamonds. Yeah, I don't want to hear it, man. It was the 60s, man. Everybody was writing about drugs, on drugs. Sherlock Holmes never said elementary, my dear Watson, nor did anyone ever say play it again, Sam, in Casablanca. Also, Sarah Palin never said I can see Russia from my house. Al Gore never said I invented the internet. Oh, and for the love of God, Ron Burgundy never said, well, that escalated quickly. He said, boy, that escalated quickly. Boy, that escalated quickly. Uh, yeah, let me just run through a couple of these. So that's true. Sherlock Holmes has never once in any of Conan Doyle's books say, Elementary, my dear Watson. Watson, nor did anyone ever say play. Yeah, uh, Humphrey Bogart, because again, Casablanca is my number one favorite movie of all time. It's actually the first movie I remember seeing uh, as a child. Um, the, the scene is he walks up to Sam, who's the piano player, and there's a song he wants him to play. And Sam's like, nah, man, that's about that girl that stood you up at that train station, broke your heart. And he just said, play it, Sam. You know what I want to hear. So he says, play it a couple of times. And he said, just play it, play it, Sam. He never said, play it again, Sam. Play it again, Sam in Casablanca. Also, Sarah Palin never said, I can. All right, this one, technically true, technically true. So the line, I can see Russia from my house is actually something Tina Fey said when she was parodying uh, Sarah Palin on Saturday Night Live, but it was based on an interview uh, the interviewer was asking Sarah Palin, well, as governor of Alaska and, you know, the proximity of Alaska to Russia, how do you think that would affect your foreign policy abilities in dealing with Russia? And the only thing Sarah Palin said was, well, you know, if you stand on Alaskan land, you can actually see Russian land. That's what she said. But it was so ridiculous because the land you can see is an uninhabited ice island. Uh, so there's an island in uh, Alaska, and there's another island in Russia, and they're separated between the Bering Sea. And yes, if you stand there and look across, it's only a couple of miles away, you will see technically Russian land, but we're talking about seeing an uninhabited ice island. But again, how does that help foreign policy? So it wasn't a long stretch from, I can see Russia from my house. You know, I can see Russia from my house. Al Gore never said I invented the internet. Oh, and yeah. for the love of God, Ron Burgundy never no, okay, said. Okay, well, calm down, that bro. Calm down. Quickly. Calm down. Calm down. Said, Boy, that Take escalated it quickly. Take All right, it we gotta speed up. Danishes are from Austria, not from Denmark. Humans didn't evolve from chimps. We share an ancestor, but we did evolve. Yes, that's the argument I hate. Well, if we evolve from monkeys, why are monkeys still around? Google it, son. Seriously. That's like asking, oh, man, we, we have dogs as house pets, so why are wolves still around? It's a chest of drawers, not a chest of drawers, as I learned when I was 28 years old. 
I've never heard of a chest er drawers. Okay. Furthermore, if you can replace your with you are, then contract. Otherwise, don't. The Italian libertine is Don Juan, but in Byron's epic poem, Don Juan rhymes with ruin. You would not explode in the vacuum of space, but you would die. No one was burned yeah. at the stake during the Salem witch trials. People were hanged, and one was crushed with stones, but no burning. Chinese for. Mmm. I mean, John, you the author, but. I would say, uh, wait, let me just... During the Salem witch trials, people were hanged and one... Um... Okay. People were not hung during the Salem witch trials. Uh... Well, I'm sorry, people were hung, but they were not burned. He, yeah, that is 100% correct. Uh, people, uh, were hung. He wants to say hanged. Uh, one person was stoned, but nobody was burned at the stake. That is, that is completely false. One was crushed with stones, but no burning. Chinese fortune cookies are not Chinese. They're Californian. Neither. Ooh, that's very interesting. Uh, this is one of my most favorite things to uh, teach uh, because I, I did study uh, Asian history for a few years uh, as, one of my, um, as one of my main areas of study. And the reason why a lot of people don't know, but in certain states, especially on the coastal states like New York and California, uh, there are a lot of Chinese Spanish restaurants and a lot of people are like, why? How the hell did that happen? Interestingly enough, when uh, the communists took over in China in the 40s under Mao Zedong, a lot of people fled China because they don't want to live under communist rule uh, and they fled all over the world. A lot of people actually settled in Cuba or Cuba. And guess what happens like a decade later? The same exact thing. I mean, they were like John Hurt and Spaceballs. They were like, oh no, not again. So once Castro takes over and overthrows Batista and the communists take over in Cuba, um, they flee, of course, to the United States because, hey, it's close. A lot of them uh, actually go to California, specifically San Francisco. Interestingly enough, fun fact, Bruce Lee, yes, the Bruce Lee, was actually born in 1940 in San Francisco. His father was a traveling actor, and at the time his wife was pregnant and she actually gave birth. So Bruce Lee was a natural born U.S. citizen. So that's why it was easy for him to come over from China directly into the United States, and he settled in San Francisco. So a lot of them, when they came to San Francisco, not only did they bring the Chinese cuisine, but also uh, all the Spanish cuisine that they had learned while living in, in, in Cuba. And that's why you get in California, New York, and some other places, Chinese, uh, they call them Chinese Mexican restaurants, but it's Chinese Spanish uh, cooking. So, and that's how you get all the American knives. It's not just fortune cookies, but most of what you see in Chinese takeout places is Americanized version of Chinese. Like if you go to an authentic Chinese restaurant where they serve stuff like there's one here, I go to all the time, the menu's in Chinese. So I don't even bother reading it. Just dudes. Like, I'm like, bring it. And don't ask like, what is this? Cause all, all they're going to say is don't worry. It's good. Just eat it. Trust me. Blondes nor redheads are about to go extinct. No one died during the chariot race sequence of Ben Hur Musa. Yes, nobody died during the chariot scene sequence in Ben Hur. In The Wizard of Oz, you do not get to see one of the munchkins hang themselves in the background. Um, I have the old VHS tape from when I was a kid, and they said, oh, but they deleted it. It was on the original VHS when it came out. I had the original VHS tape. I watched it a billion times with friends, with everybody. You do not get to see a munchkin hang themselves in the background. Uh, three men and a baby. No, there is not a ghost that's standing behind the curtain in one of the scenes. There's a whole bunch of these misconceptions. Mussolini did not make the trains run on time and storing batteries in the freezer does not improve their performance. And yes, Mussolini did not make the trains run on time. Did he make him run a little more efficiently? Yes. But also a lot of people misattribute that to Hitler. They say, oh, Hitler uh, made the trains run on time. Hitler built the Autobahn. Hitler did not build the Autobahn. Um, was it overseen during his regime? Yes. But Hitler didn't literally, you know, say, hey, let's build an Autobahn. Uh, yeah, that was not a Hitler thing. Uh, storing batteries in the freezer. Look, I still store my batteries in the freezer. It doesn't hurt. 
Uh, but, you know, physics says if you, you know, uh, cool something down, slow down the motion, uh, it should make them last longer at least. It doesn't improve the performance, but it does help them last longer, especially if you buy batteries in bulk. And speaking of unnecessary cooling, there is never a need to refrigerate peanut butter unless it's like all natural organic. 100% man, stop refrigerating peanut butter, please. All it does is make that peanut butter hard as hell and you're just ripping the bread apart. It's just terrible, man. Just leave it out there, let it be creamy, man. It's gotta be wet, man. You gotta have it wet. It's like going in dry when you're making that sweet, sweet love. You ain't doing neither one of you a favor. You are just gonna be tearing stuff and it's not gonna taste or feel good organic stuff and that isn't even really peanut butter walt disney is not cryogenically frozen fidel castro was never True. given a trial by the washington senators or any other american baseball team and lastly i return to the portrait gallery to tell you that famed sexologist dr ruth was not a sniper in the israeli army what she was really all right fine 50 julia child was not a spy for the united states during world war ii she, she was? was this is ridiculous i give up Thanks for watching Metafloss on YouTube, which is made with the help of all of these nice people. If you have a mind-blowing question you've always wanted an answer to, submit it that in comments. That was really good. We'll I liked it, answer man. them at the end of each Great video. Great job, John. April. Great job. I uh, really like that. So, yeah, just on a, a couple of those last ones. Uh, so, apparently, one of the other misconceptions is that we were going to get 50 misconceptions. We only got 49 because number 50, all of those were true about Julia Child and Dr. Ruth. Uh, also, uh, as far as Fidel Castro, yeah, there's a big, um, again, misconception and myth out there that, uh, Castro tried out for the Mets. He didn't try it for any baseball teams, major league, minor league, anything. So that's another misconception. And, uh, Mr. Rogers, Fred Rogers was not a sniper, but Julia Child was a spy. Dr. Ruth was a sniper. And that was an awesome list. Really, really loved it. Uh, as always, thank you, fam. Thank you for the support. Hope you enjoyed the video. Let me know what your favorite misconception was or any corrections you want to make. Uh, you all guys love correcting me and I'm cool with that. I love learning. I don't say I know everything. Uh, nobody can know everything. And if you want to support the show, uh, please do really appreciate it again. Try and do this full time as much as possible. Uh, it's been a rough few weeks. Uh, you know, I'm trying to do shows every day. I want to try to get back to doing two a day. But again, it's rough, fam. So if you want to support, here's how. Please to support Teacher Ready. Under each video, join button, YouTube membership, click, select level. In the description, Discord, join, have fun. In the description also, Patreon, click, select level. In the description, donate, PayPal. Merch store, t-shirts. Email address is in the description, and yes, I know I look like Bert Kreischer. All right, fam. Thank you so much for watching. I've been Teacher Ready. As always, we're going to shout out the Patreons now who keep things running here, and I'll see you in the next one. Fam! And shouting out the Patreons who keep things running, starting with the Chancellors. Chris H, Blue Tech, Phoenix, Laughing Jackal, Electra James, Elena G, and Douglas C. The Principals, James R, Spacey Doodle, Ulrike, Mick, Quiet J, Clement, Vajandra, Murika Kari, Alan, Chad, Alex, Lauren, Aaron Shepard, Chris L, Lord Gandalf, Freeman, Nathan, Rasmus, Harry, The Boggle. Sophia, Robin, Luna, and Grumpy Scots. I've been Teacher Eddie, and I'll see you next time.